Indeed, all praise is to Allah. We bear witness that there is no God but Him, <clears throat> with no partner or equal or son. And we testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger, whom he sent with revelation and with the book and the guidance that manifested in his sunnah. He whom Allah guides, none can misguide. And he whom Allah misguides, none can guide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in his glorious book, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba. وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون Indeed, Allah orders justice and good conduct and giving to relatives and forbids immorality and bad conduct and oppression. He admonishes you that perhaps you may be reminded. Justice, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is a central theme in the Quran. Dictating law and practice, it operates in a legal sense and in a divine sense. Justice in the legal sense not only tells us how to conduct ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but also how to conduct our relationships with others. And concerning justice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a special emphasis on the most vulnerable members of our society, namely women and children and the elderly, not due to an inherent deficiency within them, but due, to the but due to the fact that in general, due to their fragility and delicate nature, many abusers exploit them and overpower them and subdue them and subjugate them to horrific, to horrific dealings and actions. Their physical weakness is the norm, and of course there are exceptions. A woman is not always weak, there may be a strong woman. But the Qur'an addresses the norms and generalities within our physiological nature and within our social relationships. Now, before the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with oppression and injustice during the pre-Islamic age of ignorance, especially towards women, perpetrated disproportionately against women by either burying the daughter alive out of fear of bad luck or fear of shame or fear of poverty or denying the woman her inheritance or denying the woman her personal property or to strike and beat a woman as though she is a beast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his messenger, reinforced him with the glorious book, the Quran, and with the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to combat this destructive phenomenon and eradicate it entirely. First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equated men and women in virtue. He said, indeed, the Muslim men and Muslim women, the believing men and believing women, the obedient men and obedient women, the truthful men and truthful women, the patient men and patient women, the humble men and humble women, the charitable men and charitable women, the fasting men and fasting women, the men who guard their private parts and the women who do so, and the men who remember Allah often and the women who do so, for them Allah has prepared forgiveness and a great reward. Therefore reward my dear respected brothers and sisters, and favor in the sight of Allah is not restricted to one gender over another. And a common misconception amongst men is a misunderstanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words where he says Men are maintainers of women and you will find improper translations where it says men are superior over women and this is not the case. Qawama is a level, is a level where a person has responsibility because he has, he has taken it upon himself to be responsible over a person financially and in terms of security and, and for every aspect of their lives. And as the ulama says, as the ulama, the scholars of this ummah have said, and not every man is a maintainer of women. But again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book and in, the, and in the sunnah of his messenger address the norms of society. 
So the norm is that a man maintains his woman, his wife, his mother, his sisters, his daughters. So this qawama is maintenance and not superiority. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified the fact that women complete men as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And nisa'u shaqa'iqur rijal. Women are the complementary halves of men. And the very existence of women and men as partners, as mates, is an ayah, a miracle and sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And of his signs is that he created for you, from yourselves, mates, that you may find tranquility, sakina, that you may find tranquility in them. And he placed between you mawadda. Mawadda is a higher level of love. It is an unconditional love, an affectionate love. And he placed between you affection and mercy. Indeed, in that are signs for a people who give thought. Have we given this ayah much thought? Have we given the nature of our relationship with our wives, with our spouses, much thought? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that the purpose of taking a mate is to seek tranquility, sakina. And the home in Arabic is called maskan. One of its names of the home in Arabic is maskan, a place where tranquility is sought. A place where tranquility is sought. Where uh, 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 Sakina is the opposite of haraka, of movement. So it denotes meanings of peace and serenity and undisturbance in the house. Now that is the house. What then about the wife? What then about the husband? The wife is a source of serenity and tranquility for the husband and so too the husband is meant to be a source of tranquility and peace for the wife. And such an environment does not exist in of itself. It must be contributed towards. It must be built. It must be built. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the least thing he would do is he would enter his home. Bassaman Dahakan, perpetually smiling, perpetually jubilant and in a good mood. That's the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He loved to see his family and his family loved to see him. And from the objectives of marriage, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is yes, tahsin al-farj, to fortify our loins, to seek chastity from immorality and procreation as well, to seek offspring. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also says, وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And seek companionship with them. Ishra, companionship. بِالْمَعْرُوفِ With what is good. And ma'roof is also that which is known amongst the people as acceptable. So, is that the nature of our marriage with our women? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the best companion to his wives. And he was the best mate and the best man towards his women. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khayrukum Khayrukum li ahli wa ana khayrukum li ahli. The best of you are the best towards his family, and family here means uh, the wife. And I am the best towards his family, towards his wife, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He stated, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that excellence in conduct towards the wife is a condition for excellence in faith. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most complete of the believers in faith are those with the best character. And the best of you are the best in behavior towards their women. And in a narration, the most delicate and compassionate towards their women. And also real fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, true taqwa of Allah, is tied directly with treatment of women. Not just the wife, but all women. As the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphatically enjoined on the, fi on the farewell, <clears throat> during the farewell sermon, his, oh, his one and only pilgrimage, where he stood on Arafah and he addressed 
100,000 plus companions. And there he said, Fattakullaha fi nisa. Fear Allah regarding women. Verily, you have taken them as a trust from Allah. And intercourse has been made permissible for you by the word of Allah. So fear Allah in the women. So he is not a true believer, my dear respected brothers and sisters. He is not a true believer, the one who abuses his mother, his sister, his wife, his daughter, or any other female. Abuse, of course, is not limited to beating or striking or physical abuse. But it includes verbal abuse, emotional and psychological abuse. To tell your wife, you're fat, you're ugly. You're worthless. You mean nothing to me. To hurt her, to break her, that is abuse. To deny her, her rights of an allowance and financial support. To treat her like the object of your desire, that you only see her to fulfill your desire and then you're off with your friends. That is also a form of abuse because not granting someone their God-given rights is abuse, my dear respected brothers. And the one who demeans and humiliates her, whether privately or publicly, is not a true man. He has no nobility, no integrity, no honor. And that is by the words of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, ما أكرمهن إلا كريم وما أهانهن إلا لئيم Only an honorable man treats women with honor and dignity. And only a vile and dishonorable man humiliates women and degrades them. So ask, let us ask ourselves, are we honorable men with integrity or are we vile towards our women thinking that they are beneath us? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's conduct towards the women was light years away from ours, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Look at his example. His example is not to be, his, his, his story, his life, his biography is not to be read for entertainment, but for guidance. Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ There has been for you in the Messenger of Allah the best example for he who seeks Allah and the final day and remembers Allah abundantly. Aisha radiallahu anha reports that the Messenger, peace be upon him, would always be in the service of his family. He would help in the house, whether it's cleaning or preparing the food. He would mend his own clothes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was affectionate towards his wives. If they drank from a cup, he would look to see where their lips touched so he can drink from the same place, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would place the morsel of food from his hand to the mouth of his wife, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, وَإِنَّكَ لَن تُنْفِقَ نَفَقَةً تَبْتَغِ بِهَا وَجْهَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا أُجِرْتَ بِهَا عَلَيْهَا حَتَّى مَا تَجْعَنُوا فِي فِمْ رَأَتِكَ and you do not give a charity seeking seeking the countenance of your Lord, the countenance of Allah, except that you are rewarded for it, and or even the morsel of food that you put in your mouth, in your wife's mouth. There is charity in that, my dear respected brothers and sisters. The messenger, sallallahu, the messenger's loyalty and love and affection was not restricted to the life of his wife while, she, while one of them was walking on the earth. But after Khadija's death, his loyalty continued towards her sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aisha reports, she says, I was never jealous of any woman as much as I was jealous of Khadija due to how often the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would mention her. And he married me after her death by three years. Loyalty, loyalty towards his wife Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How are we? Do we favor our friends over our wives? Do we favor going out and eating out and having a good time over taking our wives out to eat? Oh, you know, they've got things to do at home. Yaqi, isn't she, doesn't she require a break? Doesn't she need to be entertained for, a, for a, 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 just as much as you do? Anas radiallahu anhu. And this is here the crucial uh, aspect of our khutbah, Anas radiallahu anh, he reports that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never struck a woman or a child or a servant. He was never abusive or abrasive with his words. 
He never admonished or rebuked somebody harshly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ So by the mercy of Allah, you were lenient with them. And if you had been rude and harsh in heart, they would have disbanded or dispersed from about you, from around you. Therefore, my dear respected brothers and sisters, <coughs> women are definitely not the object of our anger and wrath and frustration. Even if your wife were to have a deficiency, as we are all deficient, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, he commands us, لا يفرق مؤمن مؤمن لا يفرق مؤمن مؤمن Let not a believing man hate his believing wife. إن كريها منها خلقا رضي منها آخر If he hates or dislikes one of her characteristics, he will be pleased with another. We weigh up the pros and the cons. Do not hate your wife because she, because of a, a small fault in her, as she does not hate you for a small fault in you. And she should not be punished for that fault in her, as you too should not be punished for that fault in you. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he commanded us to be soft and gentle and delicate with our wives. He says, اسْتَوْصُوا بِالنِّسَاءِ خَيْرًا فَإِنَّمَا, فإنما هُنَّ عَوَانٌ عِنْدَكُمْ And indeed, I enjoin you to be good to women, for they are but captives with you. You took her from her home abroad, and she is here with no relatives. And she is blackmailed and treated the worst form of treatment because there is no one who can defend her and support her. And then if she calls the authorities, then she's a traitor. How dare she do that? How is she supposed to seek her rights? How is she supposed to seek justice for herself? How many women come to this mosque and other mosques complaining of abusive husbands, complaining that their families are abroad or in another city and nobody can seek their rights for them and plead with us to seek their rights, to seek for them their rights, whereas we have no power to enforce what we say. An imam and a sheikh or a mufti or a qadi in this country has no power to, uh, to enforce what he says. He is merely, his capacity is that of an advisory role. Only. That's it. So, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your dealings with your women. How then after all of these narrations, and there are many more of course, these are just a selection. Can we dare to strike our wives or to mistreat our wives or our women? Any woman from our family or extended family? How dare us use the, how dare someone use the religion to justify abuse towards a woman? In doing so, we misrepresent Islam. And an observer from the outside looks and he says, as they do, look, Islamic abuse of women. If we do so, then we misrepresent the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was sent rahmatan lil alameen wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen and we sent you only as a mercy for all of mankind especially the vulnerable especially women so did the messenger come to us so that we may overpower the weak amongst us no if we do so then we disparage all of the scholars for centuries who have commentated and analyzed the divine and prophetic texts and come to a clear conclusion that it is impermissible to strike your wife except in the most extreme and rare cases just as is the case with men just as is the case with men Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put it simply my dear respected brothers and sisters he has forbidden oppression he says oh my servants I have forbidden oppression I have forbidden injustice for myself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do what he wills. But he has forbidden oppression for himself. And I have forbidden it amongst you. So do not oppress one another. So do not oppress one another. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Oppression is darkness upon darkness on the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he warns the oppressors of an impending doom where he says inna a'tadna lil-zalimin naran ahata bihim suradiquha wa in yastaghithu 
يغاث بماء كالمهل يشوي الوجوه بئس الشراب وساءت مرتفقا Indeed we have prepared for the oppressors a fire whose walls will surround them and if they call for relief they will be relieved with water like murky oil which scalds their faces wretched is the drink and evil is the resting place let us fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear the dua of the oppressed for between the dua of the oppressed and Allah there exists no veil اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه انه هو الغفور الرحيم ان الحمد لله وكفى والصلاه والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى وبعد Today my dear respected brothers and sisters this khutbah has been delivered in solidarity with the UN International Day of Elimination of Violence Against Women and this is a two week campaign but we should firmly believe that a two week campaign is not sufficient for this is a lifelong campaign raising awareness and uh, sharing knowledge and information knowledge that is based on sound interpretation of divine and prophetic texts by the scholars of this ummah the beacons of light the inheritors of the prophets not somebody who opens a translation he says he see look look i can beat her huh and he's never he doesn't understand the english the, the arabic language and he's never read a book of tafsir and he's never read a book of fiqh and even if he has he has misunderstood it and he has not understood it within the wider context allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says fasalu ahla dhikri in kuntum la ta'lamun ask those of knowledge if you do not know and all of us all of us we what we know is less than what we do not know so we must always seek the guidance of our scholars the inheritors of the prophets and i'll finish unfortunately by mentioning a few horrific statistics that touch us here personally intimately in the borough of tower hamlets first of all nationwide in the uk an average of two women are killed a week at the hands of f- uh, 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 their male partners or former male partners and frequently these murders are premeditated they're planned in advance and they follow a pattern of abuse and violence they're not they are almost always not out of the blue and approximately 90% 97 sorry approximately 97% of all known victims of interpersonal violence in tower hamlets are female a significant bias towards women 97% of all reported cases and tower hamlets has consistently been one of the highest uh, boroughs in terms of rates of domestic abuse in london between 2015 and 2016 there were 3106 cases reported those that were reported brothers and sisters not the ones that occurred and that was a 12% increase on the previous year <laughs> making it the third highest borough in london after croydon and greenwich in reports of domestic violence against women the cost of dealing with domestic violence just for the borough of tower hamlets is about 32 million pounds a year that sum pales in comparison to the emotional cost and the human cost no sum of money can fix damage that is done to someone's psyche or someone's emotions and many of these statistics relate to domestic violence between spouses husband and wife but in tower hamlets the agencies here have reported seeing more and more cases of violence perpetrated by extended family such as in-laws and siblings now of course this reality makes for grim reading and depressing reading but we have to know the scale of the problem the scale of the problem so we know how to deal with it appropriately if we think it is small then we will only uh, recruit for this problem a little amount a little amount of our effort but if we realize the 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 sheer magnitude of the problem then we will devote ourselves to eradicating this problem we must speak out against oppression we must do so and whoever it is perpetrated against 
woman, man, child, old, Muslim, non-Muslim, anyone who is oppressed, we must stand up for. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stands up for the oppressed. Period. Regardless of what religion he or she has. And it is the right of the oppressed to be supported and granted victory over their abusers. And it is our duty to support one another. وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بعض. The believing men and believing women are allies of one another. Allies. And an ally does what? Shakes a hand only? Supports. Gives victory. Reinforces with power. We must support one another. The believers must support one another. And here are the conditions of the believing men and believing women. يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this before prayer and fast. They enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong and establish prayer and give zakah and obey Allah and his messenger. Those Allah will have mercy upon. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and wise. As a community, my dear respected brothers and sisters, if we fail, if we fail in protecting our most vulnerable members, then the least we can do is our legal obligation of encouraging victims of abuse to contact the relative authorities, to bring an end to the violence, and to provide them with protection and security. No innocent woman should ever be subjugated to humiliation, to torture, to abuse, to terror, or live in fear, not least in, their, in her own home.